Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. Well, today we're going to do a little bit of follow-up on um, King Charles and uh, Princess Catherine. I've done a couple of videos on them recently, but uh, more information has come out, so I thought it's a good idea to update that video. So I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. So, uh, listen, by the way, you may hear in the background a uh, washing machine going on that's adjacent to this uh, office space here. So um, I hope it doesn't uh, make too much distraction in the uh, video. But anyway, I want to talk about um, uh, King Charles and Princess Catherine. Now, I know I've talked about them recently in videos, but things have changed a little bit. And this ridiculous rumor that uh, is going around somewhere that the king is dead. How dumb. But uh, we'll, we'll talk about uh, uh, King uh, Charles and see how his health is and then we'll also do the same with Catherine and maybe a little bit about William and let me write that down because I forget if I don't maybe a little bit about William to see what is going on and why is um, is is does he seem to be out of sync with what's going on so and uh, Wills so there well let me get started into it right now so I can imagine uh, and again, listen, I know how privileged these folks are, but still, just take all that away and think about their, they have normal lives. Um, I mean, you know, everyday lives that they're trying to get on with and how uh, frustrating it must be for them not to be able to take a breath without uh, having to report it in the, um, to the media or make some uh, statement about it. You know, I didn't understand... <coughs> um, in the past uh, how important it is for those royals to have these big open uh, spaces that belong to them that they can roam around in uh, like wilderness and feel free and not spied on and then the the necessity of having these huge uh, castles for the same reason they can wander around in their castles go from place to place and they can almost feel like they're in a village inside their own palaces um, because they can't do that very much in public and uh, what a burden that must be. I mean, we all think well, how beautiful it would be to be a king or a, a queen or a prince or a princess. <clears throat> but it's not obvious to most of us what they're giving up to be that. So, with all of that in mind, we'll ask just a few questions about the king, about Catherine, and about William, because this has got to be a scary time for him, uh, realizing that his time on the throne is approaching maybe f quicker than he expected. But before we do any of that, let's have just a moment, you know, meditation. Okay. So King <coughs> Charles finally starting to get used to saying King Charles. Maybe some of you uh, are having the same um, awakening, I presume. Um, but uh, King Charles, these are rumors about the dire uh, nature, um, they're saying, of his health. And I mean, an even a rumor that he's already died. How sad. But uh, let's do, we'll start off with three cards for King Charles on um, on his health right now to see where he is and I really want to know from the cards is is his health uh, at a point where he's got a long-term uh, prognosis of, of being okay or is he on a shorter term prognosis of, of being okay and then not being okay so if that makes sense so three cards for that so one two three long term okay or short term okay uh, that's what I want to know First card for the king is uh, the lover's card. So he's got he's in a a situation of a companionship, and so it's interesting. But by itself, it doesn't much answer my question about whether he's got long-term uh, okay or short-term okay. Next card 
is uh, the Fool off on a journey. Again, not clear. And the last card is, okay, it's a battle. Okay, this kind of sheds a little bit of light on it. So the first card, the Lover's card, is a major arcana, and it's telling about partnerships. And uh, so I can imagine that, uh, and what I'm inspired to say, is that he's in partnerships with those who are going to um, nurture his well-being, but it doesn't really talk about whether it's long-term or short-term. However, the second card on the the Fool's card, again, Major Arcana, beginning on a journey, this tells me that he started off on this path to really managing um, his uh, 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 mortality, is that the right word, or managing his you know, the the period of health that he's going to have and what's going to need to happen after that. This has really brought it home to him that he, you know, he knows already he's not uh, stupid, but he knows already that his term, his reign is going to be a short one, but uh, maybe he didn't have it in his brain that it would be so much shorter than perhaps he expected. So he's partnering with those folks who can uh, help him manage his uh, mortality. He is off on this new journey in that regard because this uh, illness has brought it right to the front. But the final card here, this uh, nine of wands, and wands are actions, plans, forward movements. And so this shows a very embattled uh, person here. He's gotten a lot of these plans behind him. He's got this one plan left to deal with, and he will deal with it. So I would say that he is, is uh, and this doesn't take a, a, a tarot reader to, to say this, but he, now he's focused in on what that transition is going to be, whether it's long-term or short-term. So I'm going to get one more card to see if it gets us some more definition on long-term or short-term. Long-term or short-term, one card. The Chariot is coming on fast, faster than expected. So I think it's going to be more in the short-term than it is in the long-term. That's very interesting. So I don't think it's prudent right now to ask how long does he actually have in, in years or, or months or, you know, time. But uh, it does tell us that he ha knows that now he has to put the plans in place to um, that affect his tr the transition and that everything is on a speeded up uh, trajectory. Interesting. Let's do a couple more cards on Charles and see if we can narrow it down two years. I'm really going out on a limb on this, so let's just see what happens. Uh, years. I'm going to draw three cards um, and see what those three cards tell us about the number of years. And I just go by how I'm inspired to interpret the cards, although I use my typical interpretations to interpret them. Uh, so three cards as to try to pin it down to how many years. Okay. This is the Eight of Cups. Cups are emotional, and this is having to walk away from something of uh, emotional importance to you. If I drew this card alo alone, I would say eight years. The next card here is Short-Term Plans, uh, two, and then the Sun card. This is beautiful because this leaves it up to the first card. So put it down in your calendars. Uh, that uh, I'm saying that the cards are telling us it's probably eight years. So he, for him, that's a short-term plan. For any of us, if we knew we had eight years, it'd be a short-term plan, uh, no matter how old you are. And uh, and that the Sun card is that the spotlight is on him, but you notice here in the Sun card, it features this child. So for me, that's um, William. So he knows that the spotlight has to switch over to William, obviously, as we all do. But this um, puts a time on it, eight years. Okay, so now let's talk about Catherine. Catherine, the thing with her is that none of us can imagine that she uh, has a death, a deathly illness uh, that's going to significantly shorten her life. But uh, and especially thanks to the, I think the good sense of the palace to finally put her out in public and let her be seen and let people judge from her appearance what they think uh, her health status is. But uh, what do we really want to know about Catherine? We want to know about Catherine is that is this illness completely, completely overcomable? Okay, is it completely manageable and something that is not going to hinder her? Uh, she can manage it just like I have glaucoma. It's a hindrance, but I'm able to manage it. It's not going to shorten my life. Uh, I just know that I have to manage that. So let's see if something along those terms 
is what's in store for Catherine as far as um, how severe is this illness and how it's going to affect her uh, short or long term trajectory. First card, oh. So this is the Ten of Swords. Swords are uh, truth, justice, rules of law. And the Ten of Swords is the complete end of a cycle. This card alone doesn't tell us much, uh, except that something has come to an end. I'm inclined to think it's the uh, urgent nature of whatever her illness may have been. The second card up is a new, uh, is the world card, which is a new cycle. And this is a completely new cycle. This is important. And so this is telling us that um, whatever it was behind, whatever she was up to this point is done. And this new cycle is about to begin and it's a big, uh, it's a big uh, issue. That's very interesting. And then the last card for whether um, her illness is, is uh, completely under control and manageable on a timeline, I guess, is this Six of Cups. And this takes us really into her frame of mind, wishing for the way things were. I think that looking at this change in her life is really making her want to uh, or, or reminisce about how, even at the time she may not have thought her life was so simple, but now that it's really ramping up, she's looking back to see, oh man, I had it good. As complicated and as managed as my life was, it was nothing compared to what it's about to be. Very interesting. I think I'm going to do the same with her, but I'm going to draw one more card to see if this better defines uh, the nature of the severity of her illness. And it's the King of Pentacles. This is William, and this is Value, and she understands that yet yeah, what's coming next is William's prominence in her, her place by his side. That's a very uh, definite uh, answer as to her feelings and I think the nature of her illness and its uh, manageability. Is that right? So now William. William is the one who really, uh, we may not think so or maybe we do think so, but is bearing the brunt of all of this. You would think the people who are involved, who are ill, are the major folks who have to deal with it, but really the king or the future monarch is the one who has to manage all the issues that go along with being uh, the monarch. So William, I just want to know what in three uh, cards the cards can tell us about William's state of mind. One, And that's always the way it works with me, is the first few cards seem to put me into the um, reasoning uh, or the way of thinking of the person that I'm dealing with and the further cards seem to uh, narrow it down. So William's state of mind right now is, oh, his state of mind now, is, this is the absolute complete end of a cycle. Death is a very appropriate card for us to be thinking about right now because he is been faced with considering the death of his father and probably the death of his bride. So if he's looking sullen or if he's short with people, you can understand why. The next card up is the Magician card, is the Seven of Cups. Cups are a heartfelt, uh, passionate uh, emotions, and, um, and that's where he's at, having to manage that illusion, that image. And then the final card here is the Ace of Wands, which is exactly what we want to see, a big plan. He's got it under control. He understands he is the, he is the man of, uh, to take control and it hasn't, uh, it hasn't wavered uh, his uh, resolve towards what he knows will be his, uh, his future. Interesting. So let's see if the cards can let us know if we're talking about something more short term as far as, as the future for William and when he will be monarch. I'm going to do three more cards and pull them one at a time. First card for William uh, to help us narrow down the actual amount of time it's going to take for this change. Oh, just like, look at that, he knows that he is now officially off on his new journey. Uh, this is the Five of Cups, emotion, heartfelt, and again, it's looking at what you've lost or what you're going to lose. And But, but this person hasn't turned around to see what he has left, which looks like it's the two kids. Well, he's got three kids, but... Uh, George and uh, Charlotte. And then the final card as to William and um, his uh, 
what's facing him and when, when, when. Look at that. He's looking at being the king of action. One more card. When. Well, he's in the spotlight. And it's interesting that some of these cards are the same ones that I just drew uh, for the other two. And uh, they come up again in this reading just to reaffirm the accuracy, I think, of those, if you want to call them predictions. So, I don't know. I hope that was useful to you. I hope it was interesting. Uh, remember to keep in your mind your interpretation of those cards. If I was you and you're interested in this, I'd play it all back and maybe slow it down and stop it and really study the cards in those specific areas uh, of interest to you. That's what I would do if this was something personal to me. Thanks a lot. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on a minute. Okay, so this is the newest deck I've got. This is the Radiant Wise Spirit Tarot. Um, it's just another take on uh, from Los Scarbio on um, the uh, the classic uh, Rider Waite Tarot. But uh, apparently this person, Wise, has had their input into it. And uh, the, what I love about it, first of all, it's got a great container. I always feel like what I think of when I open these containers is if I got this as a gift, what would I think about it? And I think, well, this is very nice. When you get into the box, I mean, it gives you a hint right from the beginning what you're going to see. It's a close-up of the cards in kind of rich color with kind of a, a tinged uh, overtone to kind of give it an antique look, in my opinion. Anyway, the cards themselves, I'll go over, but I want to tell you first about the instruction booklet. And, you know, it's a typical instruction booklet that you get with any of these decks it's in a few different languages, and it just gives you some basic uh, uh, meanings of how to divide the cards. But what's good about it and is that it gives you a really terrific uh, synopsis of uh, how uh, uh, this uh, uh, rider weight uh, system was developed and when and by who. It talks a, a little enough about author weight and Pamela Coleman Smith, who were the creators of this and the Kabbalistic uh, theory and history of all of that. Um, it, is, uh, it gives you a real quick mention about the Golden Dawn, which is very significant to the development of these cards. And then it gives you a really great little section about, about how to read the tarot and storytelling through the, the cards. So I like the little book. I mean, it's nothing earth shattering. It's not information that most people don't know, but it is uh, interesting. Now, the cards themselves, they got a cool back. They're kind of shiny. And um, you're going to see that kind of what they are is like they've kind of made a close up of the typical tarot uh, images and then colored them in very vibrantly and then oversprayed the whole thing with sort of an antique kind of a, a feel. So they're great for me. I've got a few uh, vision problems and so in that they're close up but they're still vibrant with color and I think these are going to look great on the camera. Uh, I like to uh, spread the cards out like this for a couple of reasons. One is it's a good way to show you uh, more than a couple of cards that you get to see in a typical tarot drawing. And that's something that I always wanted to see. I wanted to know more about what the cards I was looking at before I was making the videos. And number two, it's a good way to um, shuffle the cards up without damaging them too much. And if you're reading for someone else, then there's a third uh, benefit, is that you can let someone else do this kind of spread around if they're not comfortable with making a shuffle. or, or And then you kind of get their energy into the cards. So this is the uh, Radiant Wise Spirit Tarot. And I just like them a lot. So this will be my newest deck.